Hello everyone, my name is Rob, welcome to Kinetic Rugby League. In this video, I'll be giving you my Super League Round 5 Power Rankings. Now, there's going to be a lot of changes this week. There's only one team that isn't moving from last week's Power Rankings, but every other team will be moving this week after a pretty, pretty crazy list of results. Um, but yeah, let's get into 12th place. In 12th place, and the only team to stay in their position from last week are the London Broncos. I will get on to Hull FC because I know a lot of people will be thinking, well, it's pretty much time for Hull FC to, to take the 12th place. The main reason for me is that in back-to-back -back weeks now, London have put in performances where we kind of saw some good things against Wigan last week, but it was without Field and French, and then they face Warrington, and they lose by an even worse result, and that's without George Williams... Uh, Lachlan Fitzgibbon and Danny Walker so you've got three hugely key players missing there and that you know includes Stefan Ratchford coming into number six which is the first time he's played there this season he looked completely unfit when he played last week or possibly the week before so in terms of the team that London came up against I think they should have been doing better even though I predicted quite a high score line of 44-10, I think it was, to Warrington, that's just, that's over the top. And that's back-to-back -back weeks with key players missing. So, that's the only reason right now whilst why London Broncos stay last. Because I still think, even against Hull again, I think they'd struggle. Next up, we have 11th place. And moving down one, we have Hull FC. That effort against Lee was absolutely atrocious complete and utter garbage and as I said for London Broncos on the side of Hull FC they came up against a team that are without Ipape and Lamb and yet it didn't allow them to get into the game at all the the two things that kind of saved them from taking 12th place so my justification for keeping them above London number one they at least had a sin bin at one point in the game. So, although it's not great, it doesn't excuse the result, obviously. in Just in comparison to the London Broncos, they were down a man for at least 10 minutes. So there's one, and London weren't. Um, and two, their performance last week against Catalans was at least somewhat respectable for them. Somewhat respectable. So... That's my slight justification for keeping them 11th, but it is the gap is minuscule right now. Taking a look at 10th place in my power rankings and moving up one of the Casper Tigers. They weren't particularly great this week, but nowhere near as bad as Hull. And I don't want to have to keep moving them back and forth because that's not how I judge these. It's not on a week-to-week -week basis. It's kind of taking the last few results into account, plus context, nuance, all that sort of stuff. But... I, I don't want to say there's signs from Castleford. I just think there's more good, more good things that come from Castleford than they do from Hull. So th there isn't too much to say on Cass, but they just they have looked slightly more respectable than than Hull FC. Simple as that. And yeah, it's <laughs> this bottom three is an absolute shambles. But tenth place, a Castleford Tigers. Next up in ninth place, moving down one, we have the Huddersfield Giants. There's a pretty poor effort against Hull KR. Um, I'm still one of those kinds of people that is really big into teams on paper, and I still think that Huddersfield should be doing a lot better than they are. Now, 24-12 doesn't seem like a terrible scoreline, but those two tries that Huddersfield scored came very late in the game. They were completely... Um, taken out of it for the the previous 60 70 minutes they they had no control whatsoever they posed no threat so i'm not going to allow those last last few minutes to keep the giants where they were they have to come down because as much as last week's performance was incredible i just it's just the inconsistency really doesn't help them and they've played some tough teams but some of the performances are inexcusable and they just 
yeah, I think the inconsistency is what's keeping me down on the Giants at the moment. They do clearly have potential to shut teams out, but they also have the potential to be shut out as well, as we saw against, um, it was St. Helens, I think, 28 0. Yeah, the Giants are a weird team. They've they've got some genuine potential in that team to cause some upsets here and there because they've got great individuals, but as a unit, it's all over the place. So, Huddersfield Giants in ninth. Next up, in eighth place, and the biggest movers so far this season, minus three are the Catalans Dragons. I know this is a major change, and the Dragons have won two maybe three on the bounce but the performances that i've seen i've not really liked it the caliber of opponent for one hasn't been particularly strong in hull fc and uh, castleford and just the way that they've gone about their business has been a little bit sluggish to me like i think that they allowed hull and castleford to chip away at them a bit some issues with discipline and in attack they look so clunky. It is not the kind of attack I expect I expected from Catalans at all. They do have great moments. The Ophage produces great moments, so does Jordan Abdul. But there's something about that team that just doesn't sit right with me yet. And I understand it's a major change, but again in context compared to the other teams that we've seen. I I think they were kind of due a drop. So yeah, it, I think that could be an unpopular one and I understand it, I really do. But I've just not really liked the performances from Catalans. I must add, um, Warrington Wolves, they also played Castleford and um, Hull FC back to back. And I moved them up gradually. That's only because the performances were improved week on week for Warrington. Because that meant that their power rankings got better as time progressed. Whereas Catalans, the last couple of weeks, they've just looked the same to me. Looked sluggish, looked a bit clunky, and looked like they could have seen against teams that they shouldn't have done. And that's the reason I've dropped them down three. But we'll get into the other teams and hopefully it provide, provides a bit more clarity, a bit more context. Moving on to seventh place and moving up two, we have the Lee Leopards. Main reason for that is they went above and beyond expectations. Uh, simple as that. The Giants were awful. Um, Catalans were... As I said, you know, a bit clunky, not as good as I sort of expected them to look. Score-wise, it was fine, but in terms of, the, you know, the eye test wasn't great. Lee, a fantastic effort. Absolutely fantastic. Missing Aparpe and Lam, and I think a few other key players as well. But two key spine players, I think you just can't really look past moving them up by two compared to the other teams around them. Whether they'd be able to sustain that kind of quality throughout the season, I don't know. I'm also thinking, I think the performance against Saints two weeks ago was quite respectable as well. Limiting the points they put up, only let, allowed 12, only scored four. But that kind of game against Saints, given how they've looked, I've got to take that into account on the last couple of weeks. So Lee have been chipping away, making improvements. I thought this could be a real tough one for them, and they just completely blew Hull out of the water. My only complaint for this game is that in the period where they were a man up because of the sin bin to um to hull fc couldn't remember the player's name so i just went with the team um the hull fc sin bin i don't think i think they scored a try like in the last minute of it so there wasn't even though they controlled the entire game just they just didn't put it any points within that time aside from the last minute so maybe they could have punished them even more. That's my only negative, and it's not even it's not even a big deal to me. But yeah, Lee Leopards plus two. Next up in sixth place, moving up one again, the Warrington Wolves. I think you can't really look past the performance that Warrington put in. And as I said, as a negative for the Broncos, Warrington were without George Williams again, without uh, Danny Walker without Lachlan Fitzgibbon so you've really got to take that into account Stefan Ratchford still being slightly unfit he was allowed to kind of get away with a lot I think the right hand side in terms of attack 
looked really smooth and Connor Wrench's decision making was a lot better. Um, in attack, in defence, it still looked like the most uh, vulnerable side. And that's how London scored their try, down the Warrington Wolves' right side defensively. Looking at Connor Wrench and, and Josh Thewlis, they still need to work some things out, but it was still pretty solid. But the Matt Dufty show again, he is really having a fantastic season. I wouldn't say carrying the team, but he's he's adding he's adding something. He's sprinkling that magic dust around that Warrington team at the moment, and he's just making that team better week in, week out. So the fact that Warrington put up the biggest points difference this season so far with three very key players missing, I'm not even including Josh Drinkwater in that because he's just not a key player. Missing three key players, putting up the biggest scoreline so far, the, the best goal difference, and to go top, improving in, improving week in, week out. And also, final point, putting up a scoreline similar to and also surpassing the typically top three slash four teams that we see as Wigan Saints and Catalans. Catalans only managed 36 nil, I say only, but only 36 nil. Saints was only high 30s, low 40s to six. Wigan was 60-22. So Warrington nearly achieved the 60 points, conceded a hell of a lot less than Wigan, and still surpassed what Saints was able to do and Catalans. So that's my justification for moving Warrington up one. They are close to moving up again. I think there's still a little bit of a gap there to fifth and above, but the slight improvements from Warrington are looking really good. Once I see a few more battles against midfield teams, then that's the real test for Warrington to start moving them up. But Warrington Wolves up one in sixth. Moving on to fifth place now and moving down one out of the Leeds Rhinos. I don't think there's too much to complain about this week. The only reason they've come down is because there's a team that needs to start moving up. And I think some of you will probably know who that's going to be. Leeds put in, I think, a valiant effort against Saints. It was always going to be a tough one. But for a long period of that game, they really challenged them. They were, they were in the game for at least... Well, they were leading for the first half. So... Against a team that is really strong on both sides of the ball in attack and defence, Leeds put in a great effort. So, the fact that they are moving down one isn't entirely a reflection on Leeds. It's more of a positive that another team has done this week, or the past few weeks, I should say, that they deserve to be moving up. So, as a result of that, Leeds has to come down. But I think it is unfair for Leeds, but someone has to go down in order to in order to make way for someone going up but they've looked pretty good and i think they'll still be a big headache for a lot of teams a big pain in the backside for teams trying to be competitive huddersfield lee warrington they'll really like Leeds will pose a really tough challenge to those teams that are trying to fight for playoffs towards the end of the season but yeah Leeds just have to take a sacrifice this week on to fourth place now and moving down one, Hull Kingston Rovers. Again, same cases with Leeds. I think they put in a valiant effort, even more so than valiant. They, they controlled the game against Huddersfield. And again, only allowed, allowed 12 points towards the back end of the game. They had full control. Maybe they could have punished them a little bit more as well. But again, taking into account the performance against Warrington was still pretty strong, but not clean. The performance against Salford, taking that into account, was a bit sluggish, not particularly great. And then, you know, a fairly decent performance against a really inconsistent Huddersfield team is just enough reason for me to move these guys down one to make way for who's next. Um... Yeah, I think you guys probably know who's going to take third spot. But Hull KR, pretty similar to Leeds in this case. Good performance. Still look really strong. Will be a headache for a lot of teams. Will be a big pain in the backside. Um, still a great team. They need to smooth some things out a little bit more. I think they were quite efficient last season. I think they've lost a little bit of that efficiency. And they're working on it. They're still learning, still improving. But yeah, Hull KR down one in fourth. Next up, joining the top three for the first time this season, plus three, 
Sulfur Red Devils. I absolutely have to move them up and acknowledge that I've kept them in sixth place the last couple of weeks, mainly because of I think their performance has been pretty balanced. You can give positives and negatives for the performances. But the fact that they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hull KR and beat them. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Leeds at the start of the season. And even with a sin bin, kept the game incredibly close. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Wigan. Should have won that game. Simple as that. They should have won the game. But they outperformed Wigan. So the fact that they challenged Leeds... And almost won with a sin bin. They beat Hull KR. They were a bit off the pace against Saints. So, I, and I'll get to Saints in a minute, actually. Obviously, because, you know, who else is left? But they should have beaten Wigan. So, for me, it's very clear that Sulphur Red Devils are a serious team. They could genuinely beat Wigan again later in the season. They can challenge Saints again later in the season when they, you know, hopefully get, you know, another chance to redeem themselves. But I I still think there's typically on a week by week basis still a bit of a gap to second place, even though the team that they should have beaten is gonna be a top two team. I think on a normal day. Salford are slightly off the pace from the top two, but they are a kind of team that can really grind out games, but also have that class as well. It's just one poor decision from Mark Sneed cost them that. Why did you go short on the dropout? Why? Launch that thing long, bro, and just defend your line. What are you doing? But yeah. Salford will look really good. So, in third place, Salford, plus three. Taking second place, and finally, moving down one, we have the Wigan Warriors. Very simply, I mentioned last week, the gap between first and second was minuscule, completely minuscule. So, any laps from Wigan and any anything normal from Saints means that is getting flipped around. And that's how I see it. It was a lackluster performance from Wigan. Granted, Salford were really, really strong, but Wigan really had their problems during that game. They looked a little bit sluggish at times. They weren't as I would have expected them, you know, when they're at their normal, you know, normal best. So there isn't too much to say on this. They just, I think it was just one of those days, a little bit of a dip in performance. And I'm sure they'll bounce back next week with a really strong game, a much more improved game. But, yeah, I just think, given the expectations of this one, Wigan should have done a little bit better. Great for them to, you know, end up with the results that they did. But I think even, you know, Wigan fans will take the win. Of course they will. But will acknowledge that they were a bit off the mark. Which is fine. It will happen to every team at some point this season. I mean, Hull's always off the mark, unfortunately, um, and so's Cass. Sorry, that's a bit of a dig, but yeah. Just one of those weeks for, for Wigan. That's it. But minus two, and they're in second, or minus one, I should say, sorry, in second place. Finally, first place, a new leader in the power rankings, St. Helens. Very simply, as I said in reference to Wigan, they were slightly off the mark. Saints were, you know, they had a real tough challenge against Leeds. I I thought that Saints would win, but I fully acknowledge that given how Leeds have been this season, they've been strong. They have been a problem for a couple of teams so far this season. I knew that kind of how this, this fixture has gone the last few years, Leeds have put up a real good challenge. So I think head-to-head, -head, Leeds have been able to... They've not always been a bogey team for Saints in these last few years, but they've really... Um, they've really been a problem and posed a lot of questions of St. Helens and Saints answered it this time around. They had to deal with a pretty tough Leeds team in that, in that first half, but they found a way to win in the second half. That's what all great teams do. They find a way to win and not only just win it, you know, by two points, cause it could have been really close with just getting one try just to take the lead. 
but they took the lead and opened up the gap as well against a strong Leeds Rhinos team. So that's one key reason for me to move them up by one. Again, as we can also be in off the mark as well. Saints have always been just a tiny slither behind Wigan and just this week managed to flip that around. I think the gap is still completely minuscule. It's barely visible between these two teams. It is simply based off this week's performance alone. That's all it is just to flip these teams. That's how close it was. And they could change back after, after the next round. But I was kind of thinking a few weeks back, as each week went on, do I think Saints would beat Wigan? Part of me wanted to say yes. But just based off the context and nuances of each of the games week by week, it just felt Wigan with the stronger team. Saints were always creeping back up, but it was this one compared to Wigan's performance as well that really did it for me. So yeah, a new number one in St. Helens. So that's going to be it for my Super League Round 5 Power Rankings. If you have your own list, do let me know in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on things that I may have not considered, things that I've left out, things that maybe I've kind of overdone a little bit. Moving, you know, considering Catalans and Salford, they've changed by plus three and minus three. Some big changes there. So do let me know if there's things that I haven't considered. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It really does help get the video out there more. If you want to see more rugby league content, you can subscribe. Hit the notifications to be notified of new content. But yeah, that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.